How's it going, Red Sox fans? Welcome to episode 18 of the Believe in Red Sox podcast. How are we doing, everyone? Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Uh, we are live here on YouTube, but if you are listening to wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, whether that's Spotify, Google, Stitcher, wherever, welcome to episode 18. I appreciate all of you stopping by. Uh, hey, we got some socks to talk about. We got some socks to talk about. I haven't been here for a week, and uh, we have had quite the week of Red Sox baseball, a sweep of the Texas Rangers, a, a disappointing series loss to the Minnesota Twins. And uh, But Tristan Cassis debuting, that is the story of the week. We're going to talk a little Brian Bayo. We're going to talk some other Red Sox prospects. We're going to talk about this coming off season. Pretty excited about today's episode. So uh, again, thank you for joining me whether you're here on YouTube with me or you're listening to wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. But before I do dive into tonight's episode, just want to go over some sponsors. As always, our main sponsor is Bet Online. Bet Online. It's the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, and events with market to first or with first to market odds and lines, find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports information from live in game betting, props, and futures. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to join today and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code BELIEVE. 50 to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Again, the code is believe 50 B L E A V 50 bet online where the game starts. Also, everyone don't forget. We have a couple of partners on the channel. We have seat geek. Use my code hide. You'll get $20 off your first purchase. We got about a month left of the season. So definitely take advantage of my code while you still can. Don't forget, we are partners with Prize Picks as well. If you use my code Ginger, you will get a 100% deposit match. So if you deposit 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 10 bucks, they will give you 30 bucks, 20 bucks, or 10 bucks. So a 100% a 100% deposit match if you use my code Ginger. So uh, everyone, uh, tonight the Red Sox, uh, it was game one against the Rays in their series. Uh, the Rays picking up the win in game one. I'm not really going to dive too much into that. I'm just going to go over basically what we've missed uh, or what I haven't talked about here in the last week. We got the Twins series. We got the Rangers series. We got Tristan Casas, Brian Bayo getting his first win. And uh, we actually do have some news that I completely forgot to talk about in episode 17 involving Alex Kaur and Heim Bloom. I'll get to that here in a little bit. Uh, I'm going to touch on some Red Sox prospects in this episode as well. So let's get to it, everyone. Let's get to it. So let me actually just really quick dive into... Uh, tonight's game, just rather quickly, again, I'm more recapping the last week, uh, but since game one was tonight, I'll touch on that very briefly. So if you are with me on YouTube, you will be able to see my screen. Uh, but the Rays, I don't know what it is, man. The Red Sox, they have just been a nightmare when it comes to playing the Rays this year, especially going to Tropicana Field. Uh, me personally, every time I go to Tropicana Field to see a game, they always lose. I don't I don't remember the last time I went to Tropicana Field to see the Red Sox play and they actually won a game. So thank God I did not go tonight. And uh, I'm, I'm going to stay away from this series, man. It, I'm just bad luck every time I go. But didn't matter tonight. 4-3 uh, win for the Rays. You know, Waka actually pitched really well. But in the end, the Rays were able to come up with a couple of runs off Familia there in the seventh. And uh, that was that. The Red Sox, or sorry, the Rays bullpen has been top-notch. At the end of the day, you know, with this Rays bullpen lately, you're not going to get a lot done. They did have Patino start tonight. He did pretty solid. Five innings, three runs. Waka, man, this guy, he walked away with a no decision, but he has been so good for the Red Sox, minus a little bit of some health issues. He has been absolutely fantastic. I'll talk about Waka a little bit later on in the episode. Uh, we did have Zach Kelly come in for the Red Sox uh, for an inning and two thirds actually pitched really well only give up a hit there but in the end Familia you know he's been pretty decent for the Red Sox but uh you know he's had his moments but in the end he just wasn't able to hang on to this and the Rays uh, 
once again, the pesky Rays always finding ways to win these games. Verdugo Bogarts had a couple of good games here. Verdugo, uh, he went two for four tonight. Bogarts went two for five. Devers story each had a hit. Uh, RBIs coming from Verdugo, Devers, and Story tonight. So in the end, just the bullpen wasn't able to hang on to this lead for the Red Sox. So we'll have to see how the next two games go. I definitely plan, I've really only been going live about once a week uh, lately in the last few weeks. I definitely want to start kind of upping the frequency a little bit. It's just been so busy, but I feel like, uh, you know, since I've gone back to work, I feel like I'm getting into a place now where I'm getting adjusted to my schedule again, so I feel like I'm getting more comfortable with when I'm creating videos for my own channel and when I can also go live with this. So I would like to be going live more with the Believe in Red Sox episodes probably a couple of times a week, so hopefully after each series uh, until the end of the season. So And then the offseason... Hey, we got a lot of off-season news to talk about then too. So expect me to be going live with these episodes probably a couple of times a week. So I, I know it's been a little slow lately from my end, but and apologies for that. It just has been a little busy on my end. So uh, moving on here, let's get to the Twins series. A, a bummer of a series, man. Absolute bummer of a series. Losing two out of three here. You know, the Red Sox, again, you're pretty much out of this wild card race, but you're still... There's that little bit of hope, maybe that 1% chance, 2% chance. Maybe you got a little something there. The Twins, they're right in the thick of things for the AL Central, the wild card as well. So you're thinking, hey, you know, maybe we can win this series. But in the end, the Red Sox not able to get anything done. Uh, Bayo actually did get the start in game one. He didn't make it into the fifth inning here, four innings, three runs. Uh, but in the end, the Red Sox... Their offense had been slumping. We'll get to the Red Sox offense in just a little bit when we get to the Rangers series. But the Red Sox offense had been pretty up and down coming into this twin series, uh, only scoring the two runs there in game one. In game two, the Twins really, really brought the offense on, scoring 10. Cutter Crawford, an abysmal outing for him, giving up five runs total and four and a third. Ryan Brazier, this guy stinks. I'm just so tired of Ryan Brazier. Uh, Familia, he was in here. Matt Barnes. He was looking all right since coming back, but he gave up a few hits and a couple of runs in this one. Uh, the Red Sox, no bueno in game two. But game three, what do you know? Michael Waka once again, coming through for the Red Sox. Six innings, four hits, two earned, seven Ks. Did give up a homer, but he improved his record to 10-1. and one. Again, he did pitch tonight against the Rays. Looked pretty solid. But the fact that Waka, man, this guy was just dead in the water in his career, you know, for – it seemed like, what else did this guy have? And the Red Sox basically got him for nothing. Everyone was thinking, oh, Waka. Why is Heim Bloom signing Waka? But when I remember when they signed him, I thought it was a great move because there were some advanced numbers that you could like, uh, that there were some good signs that Waka could, you know, revitalize his career. And Heim Bloom is so good at finding those things. If you remember, he signed Waka rather quick. So I think Bloom, he saw something and, uh, and, it has completely worked out. Minus, again, we said this earlier, a little bit of health issues from Waka this year. He had the, the dead arm for a little bit there, but he has just been great. He has been one of the anchors in this rotation. But uh, again, did pitch well tonight against the Rays, but he pitched great against the Twins there, able to pick up his 10th win. The Red Sox winning this one 6-5. to five. Bogarts really really coming alive here. He had five RBIs. He had the homer in the third inning off of Joe Ryan. J.D. Martinez also homered in this one. Uh, this is where the Red Sox offense, it looks like they started to, you know, game two, they did score five there. But when you got Bogart's endeavors hitting, when you got those two guys hitting, man, they were slumping there for a little while. It really sets the tone for the rest of the lineup. You know, sure. You got uh, Fam and Verdugo. They were hitting pretty well at the top of the lineup. But when you got Bogart's endeavors, you know, J.D. Martinez a little bit too, bold slumping. I don't know. It's, this is nothing going on in this Red Sox lineup. And Trevor Story coming back recently, he's been actually hitting really well. Uh, we'll get to the Rangers series here where he had a home run in that series. But you could see the Red Sox offense in this series start to come alive a little bit. And once they got into this Rangers series, oh my. And that game, that that first game on Friday night, what that or was that Thursday night? Sorry, um, holy cow, what a comeback in the ninth inning! Oh my goodness, you know, I actually started in the eighth inning. You're down what eight to three, 
in this game. Uh, the Rangers pitching has been absolutely atrocious lately, but the Red Sox took complete advantage of that. What a comeback that was. Rob Ref Snyder ended up, ended up getting the game-winning hit, but Raphael Devers, wow, what a great game from him in this one. Two for five, a uh, few RBIs. He came up with a couple of clutch hits late in the game there. Bogarts with a couple of hits. Verdugo with a few hits as well. Verdugo has really come alive lately. Remember, we had Alex Verjungo at one point. He was so good in the month of June, but he has really been hitting well lately Is uh, in this game. He brought his batting average up to 287 with a 742 OPS. You know, I've been really enjoying Tommy Pham out of the leadoff spot. He went 0 for 4 in this one, but uh, he has, I feel like, been really solid for them. Arroyo had a couple of hits in this one. J.D. Martinez as well. Uh, Arroyo actually had a few RBIs in this one. Uh, oh, actually, Verdugo had the home run in this one. I forgot to mention that. He had that in the sixth inning. Uh, but a great comeback there from the Red Sox. I mean, taking a look here, Rich Hill, you know, it was a kind of a, you know, Rich Hill had a couple of good outings there in his past few, but he pretty much had a Rich Hill kind of an outing here, four innings, five hits, four runs, but the bullpen was really good. Mine is Zach, Gale Zach Kelly and Bizarro giving up a few runs there, but Familia picked up the win there in the end. Uh, this was just a really exciting game. And, uh, this is the kind of energy that I've been wanting to see from the Red Sox over the last month. It, it just feels like it's a little, you know, too little, too late for the Red Sox at this point. Um, you know, but this is what I've been wanting to see some fight from this team. And, and they really brought it in this one. It was a, a great way to start off this series. And the offense just kept going nine to one in the second game. Fam with a couple of hits out of the leadoff spot. Bogarts, Devers doing their thing in the middle of the lineup. J.D. Martinez with a couple of hits. Kike Hernandez with a couple of hits as well. Uh, you got to love it. And hey, Connor Wong, man. Connor Wong, absolute laser shot of a home run. I'm going to talk about Connor Wong here in just a little bit, but it's nice to see him coming up from Worcester and absolutely just putting some noise. That was a shot that he hit, man. Uh, first home run of the year. And actually, I think that was his first career home run in the major leagues, if I, if I am not mistaken. I, I don't think he is home. Yep, that was his first career home run. Uh, hey, man, Connor Wong. We did see a you know, couple of hits from him last year, uh, but hey, nice to see him come up in this one and uh, contribute to the Red Sox offense. Big win for the Red Sox there. And uh, moving on to game three, five, three in this one. Once again, the Red Sox just playing great. But Brian Bayo was the story in this one, picking up his first major league win, six hits, or sorry, six innings, three hits, five strikeouts. He looked absolutely fantastic, mixing and matching. The Rangers just didn't know what the heck was going on with this guy. He looked fantastic. You know, Brian Bayo. He has actually been really solid for the Red Sox. You know, he hasn't really gone deep into games very much. And sure, he's given up his fair share of runs. But if you're with me here on YouTube, uh, you can see on my screen a 5.91 ERA. That's not very good at all. However, if you take a look at the FIP, it's a 2.99. He has been pitching a lot better than that ERA suggests. He's get, he's not giving up a lot of hard contacts, giving up a ton of soft contact. Balls are just dropping in. I'm telling you, when Brian Bayo really figures out, you know, the major league level and he starts to get into a bit of a routine, I'm telling you, this dude is going to be the real deal. He is fantastic. He's got a good fastball. He's got a good slider. He's mixing in the two-seamer. He's got the sinker. He's got just good movement on his pictures. He's got life on the fastball. It really reminds me of a Pedro Martinez. Now, I'm not going to compare him to Pedro Martinez. That's not very fair. But he really, really as when you think of all the pictures that the Red Sox have had come up, you know, there's not a lot of guys that get, that remind you of Pedro like Brian Bayo does. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say Brian Bayo is going to have a career like Pedro Martinez did. That's just not fair at all. But he really is showing some signs of him. Just the stuff, the life on the fastball, you know, the movement in his slider, um, you know, good change up as well. Really excited to see what Brian Bayo can do. Over the next few years, man, I'm excited for it. And uh, moving into game four, the story here was Tristan Casas. I mean, this is a guy I've just been waiting for. First off, when he first got drafted, I remember thinking, this dude is huge. This dude is beefy. This dude is just straight beef. I'm excited for this. Dude, he's like, how old was he? Like 19 or 18 when he got drafted? Dude was like six foot six. I'm like, this guy's a monster. You know, Tristan Casas, man, he... When he stepped up for the Red Sox the other day, 
I mean, this this guy just was massive. Like, you're just thinking this this dude's probably like 30 years old. He's in the prime of his career. He looks like a linebacker. And then he's, he's what, 22 years old? How old is Tristan Kite? 22 years old. Um, really cool to see. And actually, a pretty funny, uh, pretty funny thing that uh, before the game, he got, if, you can, if you're here with me on YouTube, you can see the picture on my screen. Uh, Sean McAdam, he posted the other day. Uh, that he was laying out in the grass at Fenway Park uh, getting some sun. And that's actually a routine that he's always had, uh, even in Worcester, you know, Salem as well, you know, Portland as well. He's always liked to go and just lay out in the outfield grass. It's just a routine he's always had. And I saw some people really, you know, kind of getting on to him a little bit like, oh, really? That's what you're going to do? You're, you know, f- you're in the major leagues and you're you know, not a really a good look, but it's just a routine that he's always had. I love it, man. That's kind of the, one of those quirky little things. You know, when we look back over the years, man, you know, we've had a lot of Red Sox players, you know, a lot of great players, and a lot of them have done some quirky little things. I love this. I, I love that Casas, you know, just has a routine. He likes to do something here. And uh, I'm all about it, man. Tristan Casas, man, go and get all the sun you need, my friend. It's going to make you look fantastic. You know, just saying. Casas, man, I'm excited for him. If we take a look at the scouting report on Baseball America, uh, and first off, in the minor leagues this year, he was looking really good. I mean, he was hurt there for a little bit. He had the sprained ankle, so he was out for a little while. But when he came back, this guy was just hitting so well. I mean, take a look at what he was doing here in the month of August. This guy... There was no need for him to stay down there any further. In the month of August, over 90 at-bats in 16 games, he was hitting 333 with a 459 on base and a 533 slugging. And that was even after missing a lot of time. Uh, there was no reason to keep this guy down in the minors anymore. Might as well just have him come up for the final month of the season, have him get some at-bats, have him get his feet wet, and uh, have him get ready for next year because this guy is definitely going to be with the Red Sox next year. At least I would think uh, he is ready in my opinion. Uh, but taking a look here, when it comes to the scouting report, if you are you know new to the Tristan Casas party, let's take a look at the scouting report here. Uh, according to Baseball America, they say Casas is a massive presence in the batter's box at six foot five, two hundred forty five pounds, and possesses the plus plus raw power expected from someone of his stature. While he occasionally sells out for power early in counts, he prides himself on being a well-rounded hitter who chokes up, spreads out his stance, and uses the whole field with two strikes. While his hit over power approach has impressed, many evaluators believe he ultimately he'll ultimately focus more on driving the ball in the air with middle of the order power numbers to follow. Casas should be able to make that shift given his professional understanding of his swing and still projects to be an above average hitter a former third baseman Casas has a strong arm soft hands and solid footwork at first base where his size makes him an inviting target honestly he reminds me of Matt Olson he gives me that kind of a vibe more of a hit tool over power a guy uh, that is 22 years old that just understands that you know hey to have some power you know sure it's great to have power but you got to have the hit tool first. You got to have the mechanics down. You got to have the plate discipline down. You got to have the plate, the the approach to these pictures down. Having the scouting reports just well read. This guy, he comes in, he's prepared. He just has an understanding of hitting, and that's what I like. And the power will come. It's going to come eventually. He's 22 years old. This dude will not be surprised if consistently this guy is hitting 35, 45 home runs per year. He's got the power. He's got the size. Just let him get in, you know, do his thing. He is going to be an exciting player. I am so excited for Tristan Casas. I've been waiting for this guy. Uh, What I love about him, though, he just has a good hat on his shoulders. You know, if you've listened to him in these interviews, you know, even going back the last couple of years, he, he's just a very mature kid. You know, for 22 years old, he's just got a good head on his shoulders, man. And I think he's going to be a really fun player in Boston. I think Boston is just going to love this guy. Um, very excited for him. But in the end, uh, the Red Sox getting the sweep over the Rangers, a four-game sweep. Nice to see, man, starting off the month of September with a sweep. And if you take a look here at the standings, so they did lose tonight. They did lose tonight against the Tampa Bay Rays, so that's not going to help you. Again, I just think it's going to be too little too late for this Red Sox team. 
I just think they were way too up and down this year. But uh, taking a look at the current standings, the Red Sox, as of right now, you're nine back. It, it's pretty much done. Sure, a nice sweep of the Rangers there. Uh, but in the end, it's just you're out of it. It's over. So at this point for the Red Sox, it's a matter of let's just see what you got for the, you know, the end of the season, you know, see what Casas can do for the rest of this season. You know, hey, maybe even call up a couple other guys. Maybe you can do someone like a Brandon Walter, have him come up a little bit. Maybe Brian Mata, maybe, probably not him, but, you know, maybe call up a couple other guys from the minors, see, you know, see what they can do over the final month of the season. We're looking towards the off season at this point, uh, which actually does – uh, you know, actually, before I do get to that story, really quick, you know, because we're seeing some young players come up for the Red Sox this year. You know, Casas, like I mentioned, Brian Bayo getting the call earlier on this year and uh, finally getting his first win. Who could be the next Red Sox prospect that we see maybe come up? I mean, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Kadeni Rafaela, the number four Red Sox prospect this year, he has been absolutely setting the world on fire down in the minors this year. He has really risen up the Red Sox uh, prospect leaderboards here in single a he was just out of his mind hitting 330 with a 594 slugging and a 368 on base I mean my goodness this is a guy he had nine home runs 14 stolen bases he's just doing it all overall uh this year he's in double a as of right now before the year in the minor leagues a 300 batting average a 350 on base a 554 slugging 20 home runs and 26 stolen bases I mean, my goodness, this is a guy he can play in the outfield. He can play some infield. Would not be surprised to see this guy in the majors next year. I definitely think that's possible. Brian Mata, this is a guy. Uh, he has actually been looking pretty good. He came back from Tommy John. He's gone all the way up to Worcester now in AAA. He's had a couple of starts there. You know, I think Brian Mata is definitely a guy that we could see next year at some point, especially with how thin the Red Sox pitching has been. I mean, I don't see why we could not see Brian Mata next year and someone like Brandon Walter as well. He is someone like Kadeni Raffaella really rose through the uh, through the farm this year. I believe he has missed some time, if my memory serves me right. Not doing very, did not do very well in Worcester, an 8.22 ERA over two starts. Really got roughed up there, but he showed some promise this year coming up through the minor leagues. So that's definitely a name that you could see. You know, Marcelo Meyer, we're probably not going to see him anytime soon, not for a couple more years. Nick York, same thing. I, I still think he's a couple of years away. Uh, if we're looking at some other guys here. There is someone like a Chris Murphy as of right now. He is the number 12 prospect, a 3.93 ERA in the minor leagues this year, but he has struggled in Worcester. So that's maybe a guy to keep an eye out for. Thad Ward has actually been pitching pretty well this year. He is in Portland as of right now, over six starts at 2.86 ERA. So maybe keep an eye out for him. And Manuel Valdez, this was a guy that uh, this was the guy that came over in the Christian Vasquez trade. Overall this year, he has had a really good year in the minor leagues. He has not done particularly well in Worcester. Overall for the year, when he was with the Astros organization, he was hitting 296, but ever since he came over to Worcester, he's only hitting 236. He is still hitting for some power. He's got seven home runs and 27 RBIs in Worcester. This is a guy maybe you could see. This is another utility kind of a player where, uh, hey, see what at the end of the day, if the Red Sox need some depth, need some flexibility, that's a guy they can turn to. Maybe someone like an Alex Benalis. He's been hitting for some power this year, but his batting average is really low at 198, but he does have 24 home runs. He's striking out a lot, though. So at the end of the day, and also there's, there is Frank Herman. Remember, they got Frank Herman in the Adam Adovino trade. He's actually been pretty good this year. Uh, overall, between AA and AAA, a 2.83 ERA, 62 strikeouts over 47 and two-thirds. This is a guy, he could definitely maybe be a bullpen kind of a guy. He has he does not start. He's got 30 games in Worcester this year out of the bullpen. He had 11 games out of the bullpen in Portland. So look out for Frank Herman as well. Uh, but those are the guys that I think you definitely could see next. Someone like a Brian Mata, maybe a Brandon Walter, maybe a Kadeni Rafaela if he keeps surging through the minor leagues. And then you got some guys, you know, towards the bottom of the top 30, like, you know, Frank Herman, as well as an, an Emmanuel Valdez. So be on the lookout for those. Now, moving on, 
Moving on, you know, we had a story. I completely forgot to mention this last week, and uh, I think it was just because I was getting ready for last week's episode when, uh, when basically this news dropped. Uh, but Sam Kennedy he announced that the Red Sox are going to be bringing back Heim Bloom and Alex Cora. I didn't even know why this was a story. I, I just I don't know because I just figured that was going to happen. I didn't even think that there was even a chance of that not happening. Uh, but Sam Kennedy announcing uh, the Red Sox plan to retain Heim Bloom and Alex Cora. He made a statement saying, I am very comfortable saying Heim and Alex will be back. And I am very comfortable saying there is a strong belief in the direction of the franchise from our ownership group. That direction is continuing to build for the future, but also continuing to invest at the major league level. Uh, and, you know, and I know a lot of Red Sox fans right now, you know, very frustrated with how this year has gone. And, and even someone like Ken Rosenthal on The Athletic, you got to love The Athletic, losing millions and millions of dollars over the last couple of years. I mean, what can I say? Uh, but Ken Rosenthal, he actually did an article. And, you know, I, and I think this is just kind of, you just don't really seem to have an understanding of uh, really what the Red Sox are doing here. But he wrote an article saying, uh, time is up. Red Sox need to act this offseason. Uh, listen, Ken Rosenthal, you know, you just don't really seem to have a, really a full understanding of what the Red Sox are doing here. They're trying to rebuild the farm. I understand the Red Sox, you're a big market team. You know, this is a team that you expect to win championships. At the end of the day, the Red Sox have had one of the worst farms, you know, way better now. It's way better now, but there is still a lot to improve on in this farm system. You, you've added some top heavy kind of guys, but you need to continue to build the depth in that farm system because, at the end of the day, you know, let's say, you know, look at these top heavy guys, you end up going to the major leagues. Well, what else do you have down in the minor leagues? You have to build the depth in the organization. So that's why you're seeing High and Bloom make these kind of trades, you know, for someone like a Christian Vasquez bringing in a couple of decent prospects, you know, other guys, you know, being traded like Jackie Bradley Jr. for the, the Hunter Renfro trade, you know, bringing in someone like an Alex Benalis, you know, and a David Hamilton as well in that trade, a adding pieces you know, to continue building for the future. But I, I do agree. I do think the Red Sox need to do some work this offseason. And, you know, what does that mean for someone like a Xander Bogarts? Could you possibly, maybe, if you're not able to sign Raphael Devers to some kind of an extension, do you explore a possible trade with a Raphael Devers? Very similar to the Mookie Betts trade with the LA Dodgers. You know, I definitely think you could see some rumors of Raphael Devers maybe getting moved. Um, I don't know, but you know, this article, I, I don't think, you know, Rosenthal, he's saying time is up. Red Sox need to act. I don't think they need to be going out there and going after some of like the top, top names on the market. That's just not really their style. That's not really what they, what they're doing. Uh, could you explore Bogart's coming back? He's probably going to be opting out, um, you know? At the end of the day, you know, there was one rival executive uh, that Rosenthal got a quote from. It says here, one rival executive said rebuilding might make sense for the Red Sox, considering the strength of their AL East rivals, including the rising Orioles. Bloom, however, said that's not on our radar, nor can it be. As long as Cora is manager, as one friend of Cora's with a rival club put it, Alex is not a manager for a developing team. As a manager, you hire to win. And that's what I'm, I don't understand why. You know, this is even some sort of like a question. The Red Sox are clearly, they're showing you what they've been doing for the last couple of years. They're trying to improve the major league team while also improving the farm at the same time. You know, even go back to the Adam Adovino trade when they took him off the hands of the Yankees. That's when you added a Frank Herman, and look how good he's been out of the bullpen in the minor leagues. This is a guy who knows, maybe he could end up being a setup guy, maybe even a closer at some point for the Red Sox. And if they, I hope they stick with the Garrett Whitlock at closer. I think that's the guy you need to keep in the closer role, but you could have Frank Herman be a really good arm for the Red Sox. And, and you basically got him for free because you took on the salary of an Adam Adovino. Now, you know, in this article, uh, it goes on to say here, owner John Henry, Kennedy, Bloom, Cora, they should be in this. They should all be in this together, intent on fixing a team that lost its way. And, you know, to kind of say this, I just think the Red Sox, last year when you look back at that Red Sox team, the 2021 Red Sox, you know, they, they had talent on that team. You know, a lot of talent left over from that 2018 World Series team. So to me... 
you know, when you added a couple of pieces, things came together and they made a run all the way to the American League Championship Series. But in the end, the depth of the organization showed. I think if the Red Sox had a stronger farm, some younger players that you could call upon, you know, they're going to remember here, the Red Sox in the second half last year were not a very good team. They came alive for the playoffs. You know, got to remember that second half. They had to go all the way to that last game of the season to just get into the playoffs. So remember that. That first half they had was pretty good. But remember, they added some guys. You know, you added, you know, a Kike Hernandez. You added some other pieces to that Red Sox team. And so, you know, at the end of the day, the, the Red Sox, they were showing their cracks last year and they turned it on when they needed to in the playoffs. But the, the depth of the organization has been showing since the second half of the season last year. To me, if you want to be a, a contending team every single year, which is the what the goal of the Red Sox is, you need to have a strong, deep farm. Look at the LA Dodgers. Look at what they've been doing for the last few years. They're in contention every single year. Look at the Tampa Bay Rays. No payroll, but look at the farm system. In contention every single year, going back to 2019. They were in the you know the World Series back in 2020 and had the best record in Major League Baseball, or it was the second best record in Major League Baseball last year. Um, you know, the Rays have kind of figured it out, even with no payroll. So that's the key to, to sustained success is a farm. And that's what Heim Bloom is trying to do here. So for Ken Rosenthal to you know be writing an article like this saying, all right, it's time to go all in. You just don't really seem to have an understanding of what the Red Sox are doing here. So, you know, what are some things that the Red Sox could do? Well, if I go take a look at the payroll, I think Heim Bloom needs to keep looking for trades you know, to bring in prospects, keep adding resources to the farm. I feel like I've said farm for the, like 20 times now, but uh, you got some guys. Bogarts probably going to be opting out. I would love for Bogarts to come back. Absolutely, I would. Now, could you reach a deal where both sides are going to be happy? We'll have to wait and see. He's making 20 million this year. I'm, look, I'm thinking Bogarts is going to be looking 25, 30 million per year, you know, could the Red Sox be intrigued with something like that? I don't know. Um, you got Nathan Evaldi, who's going to be a free agent. I would like to bring Evaldi back for, you know, a couple of years if he would be okay with like a two or three year deal, maybe like a one year deal, kind of like a prove it kind of a deal. Uh, you know, he's had his injuries this year. I would love to bring Waka back. I would love to bring him back, you know, get him signed, maybe give him a bit of a raise. I would love that. Absolutely, I would. I, I think he would be, uh, you know, sure he's had, you know, dead arm a little bit, but. I would love to, you know, for a veteran guy like Walker to be in the fold for next year. Uh, Rich Hill, I would be okay with moving on from. Uh, Matt Strom, I would be okay with bringing him back. If we take a look at the numbers with Matt Strom, you know, a 2.97 FIP, a little bit lower than that 3.38 ERA, I'd be okay with Strom coming back, absolutely. Uh, J.D. Martinez, I think it is time to say goodbye to J.D. Martinez. You know, last game at Fenway, I think he should just tip his, tip his cap to Fenway Park. Tip his cap to the Fenway faithful and, you know, give him a nice goodbye. I do think it is time to move on from J.D. Martinez, free up that designated hitter spot. And, uh, you know, hey, then you got a lot more flexibility there. You know, especially now you got Eric Hosmer now in the fold. He can opt out after this season. I don't think he's going to unless he next year his salary would be $13.6 million. I don't see Eric Hosmer. I don't know. Maybe, unless he thinks he can get more than that. I don't, I don't know. I think Eric Hosmer, I would expect right now for him to be back in the fold for next year. So, but that would free up a spot for the designated hitter spot. And that would allow for Tristan Costas to be getting some at bats as well. Um, Tommy Pham, I'm guessing he's probably going to be on the, on the, uh, on his way out. Kike Hernandez, I would love for Kike Hernandez to stick around, but a bit of a down year for him, but he really brings energy to this team. He's a good clubhouse guy. I would like for Kike Hernandez to come back. Um, and, you know, and, and I'm and kind of just looking elsewhere. You know, it's going to be, I think, honestly, Rafael Devers could be a really interesting piece this offseason. I really do. I Because this is a guy who could bring in a, a quite a package. Now, if I go to baseballtradevalues.com, the best baseball trade simulator out there, uh, we can go take a look here at what Raphael Devers' value is 
at least as of right now. So let me go pull up the Red Sox here. If you're with me live, you can see what his value will be. So I got it pulled up here. Raphael Devers, as of right now, he is worth $43.4 million. Very similar value to what Mookie Betts had a few years ago when he got traded. So I definitely think there's a chance Devers, especially if they're not able to reach some kind of an agreement on an extension, I think you could definitely trade him. Now, the question is, is do you want to hurt the major league team like that? Because that would definitely put a dent in the major league team. Uh, what you could do if you were to trade Devers, I know this doesn't sound all that great, but you could put, you know, you could have Hosmer and Cassis sharing duties at first base, you know, as well as designated hitter. And at third base, you could put Bobby Dahl back, back at third. That's his natural position. So you could go that route if you wanted to. You could go on the market, you know, maybe get a third baseman that way. I definitely think Devers is an option to get traded just because they haven't been able to come to any sort of an agreement on a contract extension. And I know a team would love to have his bat. The question is, would the Red Sox really want to do that to the major league team? I wouldn't, you never say never with high and bloom, especially when it comes to trading some of these guys. Um, but yeah, honestly, I think the Red Sox, they do have some work to do. I think in the off season, they need to, to do something with the starting pitching. I know you got some younger guys down there like a Brian Mata and a Brandon Walter, but you need to address the starting pitching. I would like for Walker to come back. You're going to have Pavetta back. Chris Sale, hopefully he's going to be fine. Uh, and then you got Brian Bayo as well. So hopefully that's four guys there. And then James Paxton, who knows what's going on with James Paxton there. Um, I don't know. I would just move forward not expecting that guy to be in your rotation. He's a bit of, he's too much of a wild card at this point. Um, but they definitely need to do something about the pitching. If I go take a look here at the free agent market, when it comes to starting pitching, Oh, look at that. David price, David price is a, is a free agent. Could you bring back David price? Oh my goodness. But, uh, you know, could you explore maybe someone like a Carlos Rodon, I wouldn't fully expect it. I don't expect Bloom to be making, you know, big moves like that. Uh, you are going to have, I mean, there are some opt-out possibilities. You got Aaron Nola, who has a club option. Severino has a club option. You know, Severino could be an interesting one. You know, Bloom has not been afraid. I mean, look at James Paxton. Bloom has not been afraid to take on guys who have been having some injury problems. If the Yankees decide to cut ties with Severino, could be the, could that be a guy you turn to? You got some other guys like Sean Manaya, who's been really struggling in the second half this year. Uh, you got Kyle Gibson, who's been doing okay for the Phillies this year. Chris Bassett, he's going to be a free agent. Corey Kluber, he's going to be a free agent as well. Could you? He was looking to bring in Corey Kluber a couple of years ago. You got some guys. You got some guys on this free agent market. I mean, I'm, I'm reading more names here. Jamison Tyone, you got Mike Clevinger, you got Zach Eflin, Ross Stripling, Martin Perez is going to be back out on the market. Uh, someone like a Chris Archer. I could totally see Bloom bringing in someone like a Chris Archer. Jose Quintana. Um, there's guys out here. I could definitely see the Red Sox looking to add a starting pitcher. Um but yeah, I'd, I would love to bring Waka back. So if you have a rotation next year, I mean, Sale, it's like, I, I want to count on the guy, but can you really count on the guy? I don't even know. He, you know, breaks his back falling off of a bike or whatever the heck he did. Jesus, my goodness. Chris Sale, get it together. But a rotation, if everyone's healthy, you know, Chris Sale, Nick Pavetta, Waka, Brian Bayo a healthy Paxton, maybe get another guy out there. You know, I think that could be pretty decent. Um, and then you got some younger guys that you could turn to as well. So, you know, maybe a couple of bullpen guys you could add. I think Raphael Devers, again, I'm saying this again, I think he definitely could be a trade candidate this off season. Um, Kike Hernandez, I would love to have back. Oh, and, you know, speaking of the catcher position, you know, I actually wonder... I actually think you could see Connor Wong and Reese McGuire handle the catching duties from here on, you know, going forward because they're both uh, obviously Reese McGuire. He just came over in that trade. Uh, he has control and uh, Connor Wong obviously has control. I think, you know, I was speculating, could the Red Sox maybe go after someone like a Mike Zunino who's been out this year, but you know, a Rays guy, Heim Bloom, 
And I would imagine, you know, Mike Zanino and that power bat at Fenway Park, that could be absolutely amazing. But could you go with, you know, could you go after a Mike Zanino and have, you know, Reese McGuire be the lefty guy off the bench? That would be amazing defense between those two. Either one playing, you're getting great defense. But uh, I feel like you could see them give Connor Wong that chance. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. I think that could be interesting. Um, you know, what are you going to do out in left field? Honestly, I say Tommy Pham, let him walk, you know, unless maybe Duran gets involved in some kind of a deal. Give Duran a chance out there. Do not put that guy out in center field. Put him out in left field. Duran can be your left fielder. You got Verdugo out and right. Keep Kike out in center field. You know, and I think you could have your, – your lineup is still going to look pretty good. The question would be, what would the Red Sox do at shortstop? What would they do at shortstop if Bogarts ends up going? I mean, could you once again go back to the free agent market? You know, if we go back to the Red Sox top prospects, you know, someone like a Kadeni Rafaela, I, I think it's a little too premature – to consider that guy to be an option for shortstop. You don't really have a guy that you can turn to right now at short. Uh, so if I were to go to the shortstop market, you know, you could move story there. So that is, you know, one possibility. You did sign story to obviously a nice long deal. So you could just have him move back to short and then you could, you know, have someone fill in at second base there. So that'd be a little easier. Maybe have Christian Arroyo move over. To, you know, have him go play some second. And actually, Christian Arroyo, when is he a free agent? He's not a free agent until 2025. So you could go that route. Uh, so just story at short, Arroyo at second. But then you could go to the free agent market as well. There's some, you know, Bogarts, if he goes out of that market, man, he's got some other guys out here. You got Trey Turner. You got Dansby Swanson, Carlos Correa. He could opt out of his deal. You got uh, Tim Anderson as a club option as well if the White Sox decide to go that route. The second base market, if you were to take a look at the second baseman for uh, for the market this offseason, Colton Wong is a guy maybe the Red Sox could turn to. I wouldn't mind that. Trevor Story at short and then Colton Wong at second. That's some great defense right there. Um, and you got some other – yeah, Cesar Hernandez who's been you know get, tapping into the power. So you could – you've got Adam Frazier here as well. Uh, Colton Wong also – he has a club option. But I can see the Brewers not really bringing him back. Uh, Segura has a club option as well. So there's options out here. If Bogarts does end up leaving, uh, I could definitely see the Red Sox – you could move story to short. And I, I would not be surprised at all if that was something the Red Sox discussed with him. Hey, Bogarts, he could be on his way out. Would you – be okay with playing second this year. And if he does opt out, you can go to short. So, you know, I'll have to wait and see how they end up addressing all of it. But what's good is the Red Sox, they have some flexibility. I don't think they need to go out here. And I don't think they need to be going out here and like adding, you know, premier free agents, you know, I don't think you need to go and do that. I think the big thing, you know, stick to the plan. Look at what the Baltimore Orioles have been doing. Sure, they've been in a complete rebuild. I'm not saying the Red Sox are in a complete rebuild. But look at what these teams that have been doing, like the Orioles, they stuck to the plan. They didn't go out there and try, you know, the Tigers, look what happened with the Tigers. They tried to jump the gun, right? And now, look at how bad the Tigers have been this year. Instead of just being patient and kind of just letting your organization develop, they tried, you know, they went out here and they tried signing some guys and look what how bad of a season they had. The Orioles, on the other hand, they stayed patient and now they're ahead of schedule. So I think for the Red Sox, stay the course, keep adding to the major league team in whatever way you can, but keep trying to add depth to the farm. That's what you need to be doing. Now, I don't see them going after someone like a Trey Turner of Bogart. I guarantee you're going to see all these reporters out here, all these experts out here, you know, saying, oh, Bogart's opts out. Maybe they can go after Trey Turner. No, they're not going to go do that. I mean, come on. Um, no, they're not going to go after Aaron Judge. Uh, pff, I'll be honest with you. Aaron Judge would be phenomenal. I would absolutely. Could you imagine Aaron Judge at Fenway Park with the monster? Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, you got some guys that are at the top of this market. You know, I don't see the I don't see Bloom going out. He went out and got story last offseason. I don't see Heim Bloom, you know, going after 
any of these guys. I mean, how awesome would it be, though, if Andrew Benintendi came back? <laughs> I would love that. Andrew Benintendi, come on. Benny ball game. Let's come back. Benny biceps, where are you at? But you got some players on here on this market. It's going to be a fun offseason. I think it's going to be an interesting offseason uh, for the Red Sox. Here we go. Um, also, we have a super chat here. We have a super chat here from Cody Ambrosio. Uh, Hap in left field. Josh Bell, a designated hitter. Uh, designated hitter. Kike in center field. Uh, Bogarts and Raffi get extended. Trade for Snell. I would like that. Um, and AJ Puck. Also, people got to relax. I agree. I agree, Cody. Uh, thank you for the super chat. $10 super chat. I agree. People do have to relax. Again, like I mentioned here, the Red Sox, I was not surprised seeing this. I, I did not see the Orioles doing this good this year, but I picked the Red Sox to finish in fourth place this year. I did not have them making the playoffs this year. I did not expect a great season because last year in the second half, they started to show a lot of cracks. A really good first half helped them get to the playoffs last year, and then they, they got some momentum getting into the playoffs, and then they just ran into a better organization at the moment with the Houston Astros at the end of the day. So I'm not surprised to see the Red Sox in the position that they're in as of right now. Um, I just saw it. You still have work to do in this organization. And for the Red Sox to go out on the market and just be buying up players, that's not the approach you need to do right now. I would not be doing that. Keep doing what you're doing. Stick to the plan. And uh, I think absolutely – um, that's what the Red Sox need to do. Drew Venny, you're saying passing. What is going on with passing? What are you, what are you saying here with passing? Uh, oh, wow. Whoa, we got some breaking news. Whoa, how, what timing? My goodness, everyone, if you are with me, what timing here? I, I think Heim Bloom was listening to the show. Is Heim Bloom listening to the show right now? I mean, I didn't I just say I would love to bring Kike back? I mean, I would just I'm just saying. I, I, and now Jeff Passan is reporting Kike Hernandez and the Red Sox are in agreement on a one year ten million dollar contract. I think Heim Bloom's listening to the show. Did Heim Bloom just? Hey, I think I think Robbie knows what he's talking about over here. I'm going to give Kike a call. I'm going to offer him $10 million for one year. I'm just saying. I mean, I think this is great. I absolutely do. This is a guy. He's a good energy guy. He's a good clubhouse guy. He, and when he's healthy, he's hitting. And the Red Sox, they don't really have an option right now for center field. So I think it's good that they brought him back. People in Boston have loved him. Um, he has not been great this year. But uh, he has been pretty good since he's been coming back. He's been hitting just – actually, let me just go pull up the numbers here. Kike Hernandez. Uh, let's go to Fangrass. All righty. So, Kike on the year – I mean, he was out there – he was out for a little while with the hip flexor injury. And overall, his numbers do not look all that great. But if we go to the game log, you know, since he's come back, he has not been – all that bad. He was 0 for 4 uh, a couple of nights ago, but uh, before that, he went 2 for 4 that night. He had a couple of doubles and a couple of RBIs. He has not been. Uh, I mean, he had. He's he's done all right. I mean, really, honestly, when you look at it, he's been okay. Um, he's been getting hits. I like it, man. I I think Kike. I I think he's a great guy to bring back, and I was literally just saying it. I was just saying, I think you need to bring this guy back. So for one year, 10 million, that's a fair deal. If you ask me, you got to remember also, don't forget what Kike did in the playoffs last year. Remember what he did in the playoffs last year? He was absolutely fantastic. So yeah, hampered by injuries this year. Uh, but I think that was a good move for the Red Sox to make. Kike Hernandez, uh, breaking news, everyone. Uh, Kike Hernandez signing a one year extension to come back next year for 10 million buckaroonies. I like it. I think it's a good move. Everyone, I'm going to get out of here. Don't forget our sponsors, uh, Bet Online. Use the code 
believe 50 B L E A V 50. Don't forget. We are partners with seat geek. Use my code hide. You get $20 off your first purchase. So if you're going to a game in the last month of the season, absolutely take advantage. And don't forget. We are partners with prize picks as well. Use my code ginger and you'll get a 100% deposit match. Everyone. I want to thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, I appreciate all of you stopping by, whether you're here with me live on YouTube or whether you're listening on Spotify, Google, Stitcher, wherever. Thank you for stopping by, everyone. Uh, Stay tuned for our next episode. I would like to do it Thursday uh, after the Rays series concludes, uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, But everyone, thank you very much. Hope you have. If you're listening to this in the morning, hope you have yourself a good day. If you're listening to this with me right now, get yourself some sleep. Have a good day tomorrow. Have a good rest of your week. And everyone, I will talk to you next time.